Let's talk about the equilibrium constant, otherwise known as the Kc value. The Kc value or equilibrium constant tells me the position of an equilibrium system. Now, what this means is when a certain system has reached dynamic chemical equilibrium, remember that means when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, when that happens, there's sometimes more products present at equilibrium or sometimes there's more reactants present at equilibrium. And using this formula over here, to calculate Kc tells me about the position of chemical equilibrium. Now remember, a chemical reaction on the left-hand side of our double arrow over here, we have things called reactants. And on the right-hand side of our arrow, we have things called products. When a reaction re reaches equilibrium, we look at the concentration of the reactants, these ones over here, the concentration of A and the concentration of B, and we look at the concentration of the products, and using those two things together, we can calculate a value for Kc. Now, just remember, square brackets means concentration, and this is very important to understand. If I have more products present than reactants at equilibrium, in other words, if you take a look at my how to calculate my Kc value over here, if my products, my concentration of products, is bigger than, greater than my concentration of reactants. In other words, my numerator is bigger than my denominator. My Kc value is going to be very big. It's going to be greater than one. So think, think of something like four over three. That gives me a Kc value that is bigger than one. In this case, one comma three recurring, for example, three, three recurring. However, if at equilibrium, I have more reactants than products, which can happen, okay? If the reverse reaction is maybe favored, I have more reactants, so my denominator is now bigger. Think about it in terms of maths. If your denominator is now bigger than your numerator, then you have something that is less than one. So your Kc value is less than one. So this basically tells me, if my Kc value is bigger than or smaller than one, it tells me about my equilibrium position. And what's very important to remember about calculating a Kc value, the equilibrium constant, is we do not include solids. So anything with an S, no solids are included and no pure liquids. So if it has a baby S and a baby L in the balanced chemical equation, we do not include it in my Kc expression because their concentrations cannot change. However, gases and aqueous solutions those two things are included. It's very important that we have a balanced equation. So let me show you how to quickly write a Kc expression for a simple equation like this. Now, as I've mentioned, Kc is equal to the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. And remember, the square brackets represent concentration. Now, if in an exam you give me that, that is not your formula mark. That itself does not get you any marks. When we say you need to provide a Kc expression for the following equation, we want it specific to this particular equation. So in this example, what are my products? I actually need to do something very important, which I haven't done yet. I need to tell you the phases. These are all gases. Very, very important. Remember we said if it's a gas, it can be included in the Kc value. Okay, so this is my product over here. NH3 is my product. N2 is a reactant. H2, hydrogen, is a reactant. So how do I do this Kc expression? Well, the top is concentration of products, so it's going to be the concentration of NH3. And you might be thinking, mm, ma'am, why didn't you put the two over here? Those big numbers in front, the balancing coefficients, okay, it tells me I have two ammonia molecules, essentially. That two, and this is very important, becomes the exponent of my bracket. So if this was a three over here, then I would put a little three over here. If there was no number over here, then it's technically an invisible number one. Okay, so that's my products. Done. Remember, this is P. And these are both reactants. So at the bottom, concentration of reactants, I've got nitrogen, N2. Take note how there's no number in front of nitrogen. Technically there is, it's an invisible one. So this is an invisible one over there. And then we've got hydrogen, H2, 
And take note, it has a three in front of it. So it's going to be to the power of three. Now, very important, there's no plus signs over here. It's multiplication in between. Okay. And that is my KC expression for the above reaction. Now, in a more detailed question in your exam, you will actually calculate or be given values that will go into these brackets. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. Okay, but we just need to practice writing down our equilibrium constant. So I want you to pause the screen, try these two for me quickly, and then we'll do it together. Okay, so for number two, I hope that you were able to do that. If you take a look at number two, Again, these are my reactants and these are my products. Now, very, very important. Remember, gases, they can go in your KC expression, but solids cannot. So how would you do this? KC is equal to concentration of products over concentration of reactants. I can go ahead and write that out first, but you don't need to. It's not going to get you a mark. So in my case, HCl is my product and it's got a big two in front of it so it's to the power of two and at the bottom cl2 is my one reactant there's no big number in front of it and hi is my other reactant it has a big two in front of it so it's to the power of two and that's it that's your equilibrium ex a constant expression that's your casey expression for number three again very important to note Solids do not go in the KC expression, in the equilibrium constant expression, only gases. Now, you might have gotten a bit stuck over here. You may have said, okay, ma'am, but this is my only product. So, but now it's a solid. It cannot go in your KC expression. So, technically, we don't have anything up here. So, we're going to put a one up there. Very important. Here is a reactant and a reactant. But remember, the solid does not go in. So, it's only oxygen gas with no exponent because the big number in front of it is one. What if I were to ask you to quickly calculate the value of the equilibrium constant at this given temperature? Note, I don't actually give you a temperature. It's not relevant. It's just important to note that equilibrium has been reached at a temperature. And these over here, these are the concentrations of the following substances at that equilibrium. So now I want you to actually calculate a value. Pause the screen and try it. All right, you would have done Kc is equal to. Now remember, you may start off by saying Kc is equal to concentration of products over concentration of reactants. So maybe you wrote that out here. That's perfectly fine, but you don't get a mark for it. What you do get a mark for is writing the Kc expression for this particular equation. So that is what I'm going to focus on. Ammonia over here is my product. We've already done this one, so I'm going to do it quickly. NH3 to the power of 2 because of that 2 over there. This is a gas, gas, gas. So they all go in. Nitrogen and hydrogen to the power of 3. Okay, now what you do is you substitute values. Concentration at equilibrium. So it's those values that get substituted in. So ammonia is 3,76. Remember, you have to square it. Then nitrogen is 2,34 multiplied by hydrogen cubed. 1,43 cubed because of the 3 over there. Then you type that into your calculator. And you should get 2,07. Now note, Kc does not have a unit. It is unitless. In the next video, I will show you how to do these calculations where you use the table as well as the KC expression. These questions can count six, seven, eight, nine marks in your final paper. So I'll see you in the next video.